This is the fifth in the series of videos that I'm doing to report back to you about what life is like here at General Convention. The big news of the day was the election of Michael Curry as the 27th presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. It really began this morning with a Native American oriented communion service presided over by Michael Smith, Bishop of North Dakota. The sermon was a loving story of a woman who encountered Jesus and talked about how he spoke to her. And out of all of that and the prayers that we offered together at the end, everyone was asked to sit down. A lone flute began to play. To the song of that flute, all of the bishops got up and began to make their way out of the auditorium. We boarded buses and quickly arrived at St. Mark's Episcopal Cathedral the main ch Episcopal Church here in Salt Lake City. After a roll call that involved calling the name of every living Episcopal Bishop, because lots of retired bishops show up for these votes, uh, a quorum was established, ballots were handed out, but then just before we voted, we stood and sang. We sang Spirit of the Living God. We sang hymns from the hymnal about the Holy Spirit, invoking the Holy Spirit's presence. It was an extraordinarily holy moment. The hush in the room was astounding. And then we sat down, we looked at the ballots, and we voted. Less than 30 minutes later, after the ballots had been collected and duly counted and notated, an election was announced. On the first ballot, Michael Curry was the clear winner, head and shoulders above all of the other candidates. For those of you who know and love Dabney Smith, I'm happy to report to you that quite frankly, he was relieved. When Michael Curry, when it was announced that he was the new presiding bishop, the bishops erupted in a roar of applause and standing ovation. People cheering and weeping. We eventually made our way back over to the House of Deputies where it was announced that he was in fact the elected presiding bishop. They concurred and then to the same roar of approval, Michael Curry was presented to the entire House of Deputies, cheering and screaming and he made his way up and spoke powerful words about wanting to be a church that talks about Jesus. It was an electrifying moment. I have to tell you that I am thrilled that we have a presiding bishop who likes to talk about things like Jesus in revival. It could be that some of the best days in a long time for the Episcopal Church really are ahead of us. And immediately you began to see the impact of his election. Tonight, I was at Program Budget and Finance, which is a hearing where everybody who wants money comes to that committee to talk about why their request is worthy of their consideration. And again and again, people were talking about, as our presiding bishop newly elected would say, we want to do evangelism. We want to talk about Jesus. Our whole deputation just was laughing because they hadn't heard in a very long time, if ever, anyone talking at program budget and finance about Jesus being the reason for why this money ought to be spent. So there's already a kind of ripple effect that's beginning to flow through the life of the church. I hope you will pray for Bishop Michael Curry over the course of this transition. He will remain diocesan bishop in North Carolina until October 31st, November 1st, All Saints weekend, where he will be received as the presiding bishop on Sunday, the 1st of November, at Washington National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. I will be present for that celebration. Up until that point, Bishop Catherine Jefford Shorey will continue to serve as the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. But of course, as there always is, there will be a time of transition. This really is an exciting new day for the life of our Episcopal Church. And so I hope you will rejoice with me in Michael's election as we look forward to being a part of a church that more openly than many people can remember, the forefront of the conversation is Jesus, evangelism, and mission. Thank you.